The four books of the redeemed in heaven. Glory to God, beloved brother, I greet you in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Today, I am going to tell you that for five days, I was captured by men for a ritual of death. Today, you will hear how I was led to that, because of my disobedience. Brothers, I was buried in a deep hole. And I want to tell you about how I was brought to that place. I was pastor of a congregation. But I said to myself, I will pastor for just a single year, and then when there is no church meeting, I will leave the church. And therefore, I made the decision to leave the ministry. On September 17, 2010, I got up from my house. I walked along the highway. And some strange men grabbed me there. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't scream. They said, there is he. They threw me and I fell to that place. And from that moment on, I don't remember what happened. Because I totally lost consciousness. When I opened my eyes, I realized that I was buried in a hole. I was buried alive in the ground. I realized that I was buried with my hands up. And I was standing through the hole that was very narrow. My body was numb, and my mouth was covered. I want to tell you that if I found myself in that situation, it was for disobedience because I had thought of leaving the ministry. I tried to see through that hole, but it was already getting dark. On the fifth day that miracle happened. My body was buried in that hole. But my spirit was taken to heaven. How wonderful. And after that, I was with Jesus. When I got to heaven, I saw our Lord Jesus Christ shining in a golden house. Our Lord Jesus Christ got up and said to me, Come, my son, welcome. And I could not speak at that time. I was speechless. He asked me and said, Where do you come from, my son? And I couldn't answer. Because my spirit was fading. It was not easy to sustain oneself in the presence of the Lord Jesus. It was difficult. I couldn't bear his glorious presence. Three times he asked me and I could not answer him. Because I was becoming more and more mute and only babbled sounds. Our Lord Jesus said to me, I heard your prayer from that place where you cried out to me, in that hollow that you were buried. At that time, I saw our Lord Jesus Christ, but only from the shoulder down. I could not see his face. So our Lord said to me, I brought you to this place so that you can see what is in this place, which is wonderful. I was able to contemplate the preciousness of heaven and was amazed at the greatness that was in heaven. So I walked through heaven, and our Lord Jesus Christ went ahead, and I followed him. We came to an orchard where apples were growing. The Lord Jesus Christ told me, you see this apple plantation, it is ready to be harvested. I asked our Lord Jesus, who are those apples for? Our Lord Jesus said to me, they are for all my children. I said to our Lord Jesus, can I eat these apples? Our Lord said to me, son, you can eat this. But now go and count. And when you return, you will eat. Today I tell you that face to face, I spoke with our Lord Jesus Christ in heaven. The Lord Jesus told me, they did not believe me, and they will not believe you, either. Our Lord Jesus Christ came to earth and performed great miracles, healed the sick, raised the paralyzed, healed the deaf and mutes. Our Lord Jesus Christ performed great miracles on this earth, and did the people believe him. Few believed in the miracles of Jesus at that time. That is why our Lord told me, you will not be believed either. In this hour, how many will be believing what I am telling you? I have come to tell you what I saw in the kingdom of heaven. Our Lord started walking from where he was. We continued walking together with two angels. We arrived where houses of different sizes were located. I could see houses that were beginning to be built. Others were already built, and thus there were several houses. I asked our Lord Jesus, why are these houses of different sizes? He said to me, these houses are the houses of my children who are on earth. Heaven is our dwelling place. But we build that house in heaven. And in those houses were four books, a gold chain, and a cup. The four books I saw in the houses are the book of sin, the book of assistance, the book of tithes and offerings, and the book of first fruits. Jesus said to me, My son, do you want to see your house too? Yes, father, I want to, I said, and he took me to my house. And I thought that my house was complete. He brought me to my house, and my house was not completely built. And our Lord Jesus Christ told me, your house is hardly being built. And he said to me, while you were in that pit, you prayed and fasted. With that, you built what you see. Our houses have three important things, prayer, fasting, and keeping watch. 
With praises, we made the roof and the doors of the houses represented our mouths. That is why he told me, I am already calling you to this place to live in. Today, I can tell you that I also had four books in that house. Jesus took a book where the good and bad works were found recorded in blue and red. And I am going to tell you what was recorded in my book. I asked the Lord, why in this book is the record in red? The Lord answered me, they are the acts that shed blood. Our Lord Jesus told me, son, don't you remember those moments? Here is written down by date, by month, and by day, all your bloody acts. And from the age of nine, the Lord Jesus showed me my life, where I like to kill the birds of the fields. And those birds that I had killed, their blood had reached the heaven, and there it had been registered. Today, I can confess to you that when I grabbed this stone, I would start throwing animals on their backs and hit them anywhere I caught them. And everything was recorded in that book. I could not believe it, because everything was registered in heaven because animals are the creation of God. There, I remembered my little son, who was eleven years old. When my son was two years old, I hit him in the mouth, and blood came out of his nose. And that was recorded in the book. At that time, our Lord Jesus Christ told me that children are his blessings. Because from God comes all the blessings we have on earth. What we can enjoy today on this earth are the blessings of the one who gave us life for which you have to be eternally grateful to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And for that, we give him glory and honor. Now, I will tell you why sin was marked blue. The sins marked in blue were for playing cards, for attending fairs, carnivals, horse races, and other worldly parties. The Lord condemned worldliness and said that this was a sin. And because of that, we make our Lord cry. Friend and brother, I am talking about the first book of sin. We will move on to the second book, the book of assistance. In that book of assistance is all the assistance that we carry out on the days of the services and other activities that are carried in the church or registered. I could not believe it. In that book, all these events were recorded. The first word that I uttered when I gave my life to Christ was also recorded in that book. All those words were registered from the moment we gave our lives to God. The Lord gives us four books, a cup, and a complete land. The Lord gives us a piece of land in the kingdom of heaven so that with our works, we could build it in that city. The word of God tells us in the book of John, Jesus said, I am going to prepare a place for you. So I can tell you that as we pray and fast, we are preparing for the kingdom of heaven. Today, I can testify that all our acts are registered in heaven. Everything that man does here on earth is completely registered in the kingdom of heaven. Our attendance at the days of worship is recorded. Many times, we miss the days of worship or vigils. But everything was recorded. Even the one who went to the house of God, and who had returned home halfway was registered there. That was shown to me by our Lord Jesus. Then, Jesus said to me, We are going to look at the offering and tithes book. In that book of offerings, what we had deposited was recorded. Offerings, tithes, everything was recorded there. I could see the offerings that I had deposited. There was little money that I had deposited in offerings. Therefore, all offerings that were deposited on that date were recorded in that book of offerings and tithes. The offerings and tithes were in separate places. They were not together. Each person has their own record in the kingdom of heaven. I saw recorded the offerings and tithes that I had given on earth, be in heaven. Therefore, everything that you have tithed and given as offerings are written down there in the kingdom of heaven. It's not a lie. Now, I will tell you what is recorded in the fourth book. In this book, all the first fruits that one performs in the house of God are registered. Because all the first fruits are registered, they're in heaven. If your first fruits is a pound of potato, a pound of corn, everything is recorded in that book of first fruits. The amount that one has presented is also registered. The work is not in vain. Every work that we carried out here in the land is registered in the kingdom of heaven. Giving alms were also registered. The book of Proverbs 19:17 says, He who has pity on the poor lends to the Lord, and he will pay back what he has given. Therefore, nothing is outside of God's record. The first fruits that we give from the breeding of our animals are registered in that place. I also saw that I had a gold chain in heaven. Do you know how we make that gold chain and what we make it with? The works that we carry out here on earth, such as sweeping, putting flowers in the house of God, all those works were registered. And with those works, we could build that golden chain. Wonderful. 
I could see that I also had a gold chain for the seven years that I had served as a deacon in the work of God. All the work I did was registered. That chain was built on the basis of my service. Even the things that we gave away in the house of God were fully registered. In this place, everything was well ordered. Everything I tell you is like that in heaven because I saw it. Even the clothes that we donated were found as first fruits because all the things that we give to God were registered there. Now, I will tell you about that cup where our tears were. In the cup, I could see the tears that I had shed. My tears for the cause of the things of God and all that was in that cup full of tears. Every tear we shed in singing and praying, everything was in that cup. All that was received the tears we had shed. After having contemplated all that our Lord Jesus Christ came and we continued to cross the immense heaven. And our Lord Jesus Christ was before me and the angels were behind us. And so we arrived at the place where there were flowers. When we arrived at that immense place of flowers, those flowers gave aroma so fragrant that they cannot be compared with those here on this earth. What a fragrant smell. There I could see all kinds of flowers, and different aromas, but nothing compared to that of this land. How glorious! I stared at that huge field of flowers. And it was nice to see that huge expanse of flowers. And in that our Lord had turned away from me. I looked for our Lord Jesus and I could not find him. I started looking for him in the middle of the flowers but I couldn't find him. So I started running here and there. But I was heartbroken because I was alone. I said, where are you, Lord Jesus? As I ran there, an angel appeared to me. That angel of the Lord said nothing to me. And I followed him. Our Lord Jesus Christ appeared on the path we followed. I could hear screams and voices. And I was wondering what was happening. Our Lord Jesus Christ said to me, Son, are you listening to that noise of people? Yes, Father, I am listening. But I could not fully contemplate the face of Jesus. Our Lord Jesus led me to the door of hell. There he took me and we arrived at that place of torment where I could hear the screaming. Our Lord Jesus Christ was sobbing and said to me, Do you hear that screaming? Yes, Lord. These people are those who did not accept me as their Savior. That is why they are in this place. And our Lord Jesus Christ told me, Some of these people you know, and today you will be able to see them. I came to the memory of what my mother had told me about my father's death when I was one year two months old. Jesus called my father, Maximo Escobar Christen, and I could see that my father coming out of the middle of those flames. My father began to speak to me like this, My son, you can see me in the middle of this place of torment where I am. While I saw my father, I realized that my poor father's face had been deformed from crying so much. Part of his nose had come to his mouth. It had already become like a hole. My father's tears had deteriorated his face. When I was contemplating all that, I also began to cry. And when my father left that place, Satan was watching him at every moment. I could see that Satan's ear was like the ear of a sheep. His face was like a monkey's, and his eye was like a pig's. And I could see that he had a sword in his hand, and he guarded my father at all times. My father told me, Son, when you go back, you have to warn my relatives that they do not come to this place, that only I am in this place, that they do not come here. So when I was talking with my father, our Lord Jesus Christ extended his hand, and then my father began to cry in this agonizing way. And from his face, it began to fall like rotten meat in pieces. My father was screaming, how sad and painful it was to see that scene. My father returned to that place of torment where he was. I was very sad to see that reality. He was accompanied by Satan and his demons. I could not contemplate that moment. What I was seeing was very sad and painful. Our Lord Jesus Christ approached me and began to comfort me by drying my tears. And so I could feel the comfort of our Lord Jesus. There, I could contemplate the greatness and beauty of Jesus, how beautiful he is, and how precious his hair was, and the precious cloak that covered him in that splendor. Our Lord Jesus Christ walked in sandals, and not with shoes. All that I could see in heaven and the beauty of Jesus. And our Lord asked me, who else do you want to see in this place? I said, I want to see my cousin, Olga. Then our Lord Jesus called that person, and I could see that person very far away. But Satan did not leave her alone and was always by her side. When that person came out, Satan was also watching her very closely. And she said to me, Juan, are you in this place too? 
And our Lord Jesus Christ replied, No, he is going to return. She told me, If you are going back, please tell my dad and my mom, my brothers and my sisters, that they don't come here. I don't want them to come to this place, please. When she said that, I said, Olga, you are a woman, and where is your hair? Because she was totally bald at the time. She began to answer me saying, they preached the word of God to me, but I did not listen. So in this place, what I do is pull my hair for not listening to the word of God. And after that, our Lord Jesus Christ reached out his hand and Olga disappeared once more into the depths of hell, accompanied by the angels of Satan. I saw my cousin plunge into that deep hell. Many of them sent me orders to preach to their families, to tell them that this is true, that it is not a lie. And if we don't repent, hell awaits us. They're in eternal suffering, where there are weeping and gnashing of teeth. After this, the Lord Jesus Christ, and I left that place, and I followed him, and walking, we arrived at the place where the saved were. And we got to heaven there. Our Lord Jesus Christ told me once again, here are those who have died in my ways, and you will see those men who died serving me. Now they are here in the kingdom of heaven, and you will witness that. Then, Jesus reminded me of an aunt named Modesta, who was already old. Jesus started calling, Miss Modesta. She appeared as a little girl in her 19s or 20s. I could not believe it. She came out with some flowers in her hands. It was very beautiful to see that person dressed in white, and on her head, she wore a gold crown in the shape of a rainbow. That woman had died at an old age. And that old woman was no longer an elderly woman, but a young woman. And at that time, that woman commissioned me many messages for her relatives. She told me, please, tell my families to make an effort so that they come to this place, and don't get lost. In that way, that woman commissioned me, please tell them that I am in heaven, and that they prepare themselves. So when we talked, our Lord extended his hand, and she disappeared. I have two children who died. One of them died on the first day of birth, and the other died when he was one year and two months old. And the Lord called them, and my children came out to meet me. But they were no longer children. They were no longer babies. But they were already robust boys and tall like me and running towards me. These boys told me, Dad, Dad, and they approached me. I am hopeful that with the dead in Christ, we will meet in heaven. We know that there is no old age in the kingdom of heaven. Even if you die as an old man, you are advanced, and you cannot even walk. But we know that in the kingdom of heaven, you will find yourself young and new creatures. And after that, our Lord Jesus Christ began to walk towards the door of heaven, and arriving at that place, our Lord Jesus Christ bent his knees and began to cry bitterly. Thus, prostrate on his knees, our Lord wept bitterly for each one of us. He shed his tears. Moving his head from one place to another, he wept bitterly. And he said, what you saw here, you have to warn, you have to testify. Because people are already tired of singing, and tired of praising me. Our Lord Jesus Christ told me, Go and testify to all those who do not know, declare to them everything that you have seen in this place, because with all the preaching that my pastors, my servants, and all those who preach the word from God, there is no repentance, no obedience. See, if with this that I have shown you today, people can show repentance, and they can be saved. That is what I want. Our Lord Jesus Christ told me, run, run with this message, and warn everyone so they can be converted. What I want is for my people to repent of their sins. God loves us very much, because these people are his chosen people, and bought with his blood. That is why our Lord Jesus Christ should not be made to cry because while he wept, even his cloak got wet. Those tears of our Lord Jesus Christ fell to the ground, and wet his cloak. He was crying, and I was watching our Lord shed tears. Thus, with our sins, we make him cry. From all this, I understood that from here on earth, the sin of man descended before the presence of our Father. I could also smell that smell of sin. It was a totally unpleasant sin. I couldn't bear what I was smelling. That's how sin smells. He told me, I can't rest easy with this unpleasant smell of sin that emanates from men. But this will soon be over. Go and warn and run, there is still time to repent, there is still time to find salvation. Speaking these words, our Lord was crying. What an incomparable experience it was to see the Lord. And our Lord said to me, hurry up and tell them what you have seen in this place in your witnessing and preaching my gospel. 
so I will send you back. When our Lord told me to go back, I appeared in my fleshly body again. My physical body was very cold. I tried to return to my physical body, but my spirit went around and around, and I could not enter. Our Lord told me, in six days, you will be resurrected. I could see that they had covered me with a flat stone and they had secured me with cement. In order to hide that they had buried me, they had thrown me a little more dirt and I could see myself and it was not so easy to return to my physical body. And in my vision, I could see two angels from heaven descending. The angels removed the flat stone, grabbed my hands, and rescued me from that place. I was not rescued by any man. They again covered the place as it was. Those two angels took my hands and began to take me because I could not walk. I went out hugging the angels. We walked and left that hole where I had been buried alive. At that time, and the angel of the Lord told me, Now you can go, you can walk alone from this place. This is my testimony of how the angels of the Lord rescued me and not men. If I find myself in this place, it is to be able to tell you what God did in me.